I see you're just gonna run if you watch this video. I'd love to get your reaction. Why? That's simple. And I guess I shouldn't make it a bigger deal than it actually is. So let's get in. <sighs> I already know what this video is gonna be about. Can I make two very clear statements? Okay. One, inaction is action. Whether or not you agree with that is doesn't matter. Okay. If you do not act, that is an action. Okay. A lot of people are uncomfortable with that. Grow the fuck up. That's life, okay? If you do nothing, you've done something, all right? That's number one. Number two, everything that you do in some way, size, shape, or form is political. That includes furthering the status quo, okay? If things are a certain way and you try to shake things up and people call you political for it, fine, whatever. Everything is political. But if things are a certain way and you continue to act that way, that's just as political, okay? These are kind of like two sides of the same coin, but I just want everybody to like know that, that th those two statements are absolutely true, and I will stake my life behind both of those statements, all right? <sighs> okay, here we go. Okay. So I wanted to learn more about it on my own, so I started reading some of these books. And whether we want to admit it or not, these are role models. And then we sexualize, we objectify, we marginalize, and we reduce these female characters a lot less than they can be. So while working on The Last of Us, I had the secret agenda. This is a small clip from a presentation that was hosted by Neil Druckmann back in 2013, a few months after The Last of Us had just come out. In it, he openly talks about his thought processes and the many goals set out for the game. One of the biggest ones being related to this agenda he speaks of, which is to create one of the coolest non-sexualized female game protagonists. Now, this is in response to what he noticed as a game developer, that many of the female roles in all entertainment, from movies to video games, are being portrayed in stereotypical ways, focusing on their appearance more than any other strengths. I think I speak for myself and the majority of regular gamers that we honestly don't mind. We play games to have fun, to experience great stories, and who we play as has never been an issue. If it we honestly don't mind if all the characters are hypersexualized. How do you? How can you miss the point that? Should I maybe I should like listen to a minute before I stop and cut him off in case he addressed something I'm gonna say? I'll, I'll, I'll go forward for like a minute, or actually, we can treat it like a debate, I guess, and start writing shit down. <clears throat> uh, should I set it to normal speed? Oh, fuck, this is gonna be painful. And the majority of regular gamers that we honestly don't mind, we play games to have fun, to experience great stories, and who we play as has never been an issue. If a character is relatable, well written, then I can totally place myself in their shoes. Fuck, hold on. So when I brush my teeth, I am relating to the government or the public affairs of a country. Um, sure you can be, dude. And that's all I could possibly ask for. Whether it is Nathan Drake or John Marston, who physically may have more in common with me, or Senua and Faith from Hellblade and Mirror's Edge. I love all these characters because I connected with them, I understood and related to how they felt in various situations. Diversity, inclusiveness, representation, these are the terms that you now constantly hear when watching interviews with Noyadog or simply by reading the Twitter timeline of many of their employees. In itself, I have few problems with these ideals. There's nothing wrong with wanting gamers to respect people of all kinds. But there is another side of the coin. It can get a little ridiculous how much focus a dev puts on these topics nowadays, like they're forgetting that the quality and appeal of the story is still the most important goal. For example, I've yet to see a game feature a Dutch protagonist with an accent like me, but I've certainly never felt like I needed to be represented more. I understand that an entire game taking place in my Oh, fuck, wants to listen to it. I'm just kidding. own small country is not going to appeal to the mass market, and so you certainly won't hear me complain. That itch to constantly push a certain narrative is to me a little concerning because other aspects could start suffering from it, and it can sometimes come off as a little pretentious. Okay, okay, so I don't think... It, so, first of all, like, no, we haven't given, like, any real arguments here. Um, th this is this is so stupid. So if every single woman character that's presented across any form of media always has to be hypersexualized, arguing, well, we don't mind if they're hypersexualized, doesn't address the issue, right? The issue, I'm not, I haven't seen this Naughty Dog interview, but what I'm guessing is what the guy said was, it kind of bothers me that in order to have a female protagonist, that female protagonist has to fit a very narrow paradigm of what it means to be a female. You have to be super hot, you gotta have huge fucking boobs, beautiful ass, you gotta be super perfect, like, you, ha you have to 
be basically wankable, right? And if somebody can't jerk off to how fucking beautiful you are, um, then you're not you're not worth anything as a female protagonist. Now that before all the fucking autistic people come out, like oh, so women can't be pretty and blah, blah, right? No, women can be pretty and be a protagonist as well. But the flip side is that like it's very rare to have like a female protagonist like Master Chief, where you don't even know what the fuck they look like, right? You, you, you like. How many female... Pro well, what about Salmon? Fuck off. Right? For the most part, like, you never really get female protagonists that, that aren't conventionally attractive, right? And it sounds like that's something that they wanted to address. Um, which is fine. Which is a fine point. If you want to make a female protagonist that's not hypersexualized, sure, that's fine. Um, so this doesn't really address that. Who we play as has never been an issue. Bullshit. I don't buy this argument from white gamer bros anymore, okay? When everybody freaks the fuck out if there's a black main character or a female fucking character, I don't buy this. We don't care who we play as. I think that people say they don't care who they play as because they always get to play as a white male. I don't buy that argument anymore. I used to push that argument when I was younger and more naive, when, and then I realized that 95% of my audience was full of shit, and they were white male gamer bros who only say, say this statement, that they don't care who they play as, because 95% of the protagonists that they play as look like them, okay? So bull, that argument is bullshit. Um, I love all these characters because I connect to them. That's fine. It's not related to anything we're talking about at all. You can connect to male, female, sure, whatever. That has nothing to do with, with increasing the, the variety of protagonists you see. And then I'm Dutch and I've never felt like I needed representation. This like, I'm a snowflake and I've never felt like blah, 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 is another argument that I used to peddle. Well, that's great that maybe you personally feel that way. Not everybody feels that way. Also, like you might be Dutch, but I mean like you have a white male character that's straight that like matches a lot of fucking check boxes maybe they don't exactly have a dutch accent but that's that's pretty close to, to what you are right versus like a woman that has no female protagonist or or a minority character that has nobody that even looks like them um so i don't feel like this is like a fair comparison um you know that's kind of like saying yeah well you know you know i've got a cockney accent and you know usually they just use traditional british accent so i feel like i'm not being represented it's like oh, okay all right anyway so we've got we're five and a half minutes in and we haven't really talked about anything yet but all right that said, it's the developer's choice, and I'm not gonna tell them what they should or shouldn't do. All that I'm saying is if it ever gets to the point where an agenda intervenes with the quality of a story, or it stops appealing to me, then my response will be simple. I'm not buying the game. Now, go Are we gonna get examples of this happening? I really hope he gets into it, especially because we're watching a lot of um, The Last of Us which is like one of my favorite console games. I'm so happy I play this game because I don't play many good games like in the past like five or 10 years. This was one of them. I really like this game. So I really hope he gives me some some uh, The Last of Us examples of where this narrative pushing is fuck shit up. I'm not buying the game. Now, going back to Noyer Dog, obviously to this day, I've never felt that way. Quite okay. the opposite. Oh, okay. I actually used to defend their decisions made in previous games. The used to. Part one subtly hinted at Bill being gay, but it never became a real part of the experience because it didn't need to. The left be ah, where problematic. Um, there are so many unintentional things. I've gotten better at identifying these over the past years. There are so many unintentional things that people say that can be harmful in ways that you don't imagine, and this is one of those things, right? Became a real part of the experience because it didn't need to. Like. The fact that you need a good reason to be gay is like a really important thing. So like if I would, so here's an example. If I walk through, um, when did they hint at him being gay? Um, I believe in Watch Dogs, or no, I keep, I want to say Watch Dogs. I think in, in The Last of Us, wasn't there a part where he talks about his old partner and friend and it makes it sound like they were gay for each other? I feel like that happened. I could be wrong. I could be misremembering, but I feel like that was like very strongly hinted at that him and his fr old friend were like lovers or whatever. Um, I don't like this idea that like, it, it, here's here's like the feeling I get that if I walk through a house and I, in a video game, I walk through a house and on the on the wall, you see like a picture of like a husband and a husband hugging and kissing each other. People will look at it and be like, why do they have to shove like the gay shit in? Like, is this important to the story? Do I need to know that this person is gay? Like, isn't that kind of dumb? Like, I don't understand like the, the gayness of this character. Like, whereas if it was a picture of like a traditional straight couple, um, then it's like, no one would say anything. They just like, oh, okay, I guess he was married, you know. And it's like, but because, but it, as soon as somebody like differs from the norm a little bit, it needs to be justified. And I think that kind of idea is not the best kind of idea. But the Left Behind DLC built up to Ellie's kiss with Riley very well, and it helped flesh out a character just a little more for that small additional story content. 
A lot of people had a problem with Nadine in Uncharted 4, and I found those complaints understandable, though they personally never bothered me so much. Sure, she's another strong female character who leads the whole army and gets to beat up Drake in a sequence where you pretty much can't fight back. You could also argue that, had Wraith led this army and Nadine was out of the picture, the story of the game practically wouldn't have changed, and so Nadine served little purpose. Again, I understand these complaints, but I liked playing through the various encounters, and it added an extra element of tension to the game. Something that I don't like that I notice a lot of, and it's really hard to disentangle these, is... Sometimes you get just shitty writing and shitty characters. But if it's a woman or a minority character, people are really quick to ascribe it, like SJW tendencies or whatever. Hold on one second. Um, and I've and I've talked about this as well, where it's like, I think that Star Wars, especially the most recent Star Wars, is like a really shitty movie. But like, it's I like I wouldn't say that like it's a shitty movie because SJWs have given like females and males like certain like it's just a bad movie. Like there's just bad writing, bad bad plot devices, bad bad themes, bad. There's a lot of bad dumb shit in the most recent Star Wars movie. But um, yeah, I don't know. Game. These discussions had been going on for quite some years, but I never took issue. That was until recently when a few problems with Noyadog arose for me. It started with a relatively small thing, and that was after the release of Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I remember the months leading up to its release, how I would joke around with some of my viewers and friends of mine in real life that the game would end with Chloe and Nadine in a relationship. It was sort of meant as a joke, referring to the Left Behind DLC, and not for a second did I actually think it would happen. The Lost Legacy was meant to be a small, standalone adventure, all about the treasure hunting, set pieces, and exploring the beautiful locations in India. That being said, we knew the background of both Chloe and Nadine, so it obviously wouldn't make sense, and it's not what anyone was looking to get out of the game. By the time I played it, I forgot all about that. I enjoyed the game greatly for what it was, and a romantic relationship between the two obviously never happened. That's when a few months later, I came to the realization that while Noidok left the topic untouched, against all my expectations, it seemed they actually wished they didn't have to. In December, the company sent out a Happy Holidays tweet with a piece of artwork made by one of its own employees. It showed Chloe and Nadine standing on the mistletoe. They looked down to the floor with embarrassed faces, and it obviously implies that they're in love with each other. It's probably just a one-off thing is what I thought at first, but it didn't actually stop here. Ever since and up until today, members of the studio are addressing the two as Claudine, a typical way on the internet of referring to a couple these days. But that's not all. They constantly share around specific fan art, for example, the two marrying, and I'm sorry, it just rubbed me the wrong way. That's not because I have anything against gay characters, I was fine with it and left behind, but because this is so clearly forced and done to indeed fit an agenda and satisfy a specific audience. Both okay. Here we go. Here's where I break with the SJW shit. Are you ready? Whew! If you want to include like gay or straight people in media, I do think it's a little bit kind of dumb to throw it in after. Now, this isn't something that's going to like upset me or whatever, but like the people that do like after you've made something and then you've left it alone and you haven't like hinted at anything at all, when they say like, oh, by the way, those guys were gay, that feels a little kind of dumb to me. I remember when, um, I remember when uh, uh, JK Rowling did this with Dumbledore, when she was like, oh, by the way, Dumbledore is gay. And it's like, oh, okay. Sure, I guess that seems kind of but I, that feels kind of weird to me. Um, I don't I don't know. I don't really care that much, but I'm guessing it bothers this guy a lot more than Both of these characters had several relationships established in the past Chloe with Drake and Flynn, Nadine with Rafe and Asav. Sure, the counter argument that the two could possibly be bisexual exists But it's so irrelevant when you take in mind that the Lost Legacy just focused on a treasure hunting adventure with a completely different goal and outcome What annoys me so much is just because Noidog wants to push gay acceptance something I very much stand for as well They'll change around characters to fit their narrative some people may agree with me on this, and to others it might sound like a small pointless thing to complain about. What you need to understand, though, is that I am very passionate about this series. I felt attached to it for close to a decade now, and I hate to see it changed just for virtue signaling reasons. But this was merely the thought. Look, it's no. Wait, what does he mean by that? I was attached to it for decades, and now I hate to see it change. Did he like want to fuck the main character, and now he's sad that she's a lesbian, or? What? Like, I don't understand. Wait, I don't understand that. I don't understand what that means. 
secret that Noido has been inspired by the extreme social justice movement that we see today. Neil Druckmann is a very big fan of Anita Sarkeesian. He's praised her work and even handed her an award for it. But I'm pretty sure that alarm bells will go off for many of you just hearing her name. She's far from someone I would look up to, that's for sure. She's a person who loves nothing more than to accuse gamers and game creators of sexism, racism, homophobia, and all the other judgmental terms that you can find. She was never a gamer, and a minute of research will make clear that she represents the complete opposite of tolerance and freedom for gamers and creators to decide what to make and what to play. This is simply worrying to me, and the more I hear about The Last of Us 2, the more I fear that Noido is about to go overboard with this stuff. There is already an overemphasis on female characters that is becoming more and more visible to me. First, we have fans asking for Chloe and Cutter to return, two fan favorites. Okay, so like, I wish I would have saved the comments. So this is something that bothers me. Earlier, he said, we don't care who we play as, we just want to connect to good characters. And now he says there's an overemphasis on female characters. So like, here's like where, what I'm wondering happens in like the gamer brain, okay? So it makes you uncomfortable as a man that you're having to play games now with an overemphasis on female characters. But whenever women complain that there aren't females in games, you would say, don't worry about it. It shouldn't matter who you play as. How do you hold these two incredibly contradictory positions at a single moment in time? Like, hold on. Aren't people more likely to ascribe SJW things to these characters because most of these characters are conspicuous in how they are written? Many of them are so obviously social commentary. Sure, but like there's a lot of like social comment. Let's be real. Video game writing is not like the apex of like writing. Even today, most video game writing is pretty like, I don't even want to say teenage accessible because it's war it's bad most video game writing is is bad can like can we destiny not everyone cares about representation what is that how does that what does that have to do with anything i've said I feel like I have to delve into Anita's work just because it seems like every dumb fuck immediately brings her up as a boogeyman and I can never trust him to not misrepresent everything in her arguments. <sighs> I, I, Anita's problematic for a couple things, in my opinion. I think, I don't even know if she's a real person or if she's just like a puppet of that M M McKinthy guy or whatever. Like, um, I'm pretty sure he uses her fucking Twitter account. Um, I'm not a big fan of Anita, I, but I, yeah, people go a little bit crazy. She's kind of become like the punching bag and the representation of like all of feminism, I guess. And yeah, I'm not sure. Ugh, I, there's a lot going on there. But the latter was completely ignored, and what we got instead was Nadine, a character that few people even liked at all in Uncharted 4. Now we have The Last of Us 2, where Ellie has taken over the lead. I'm personally fine with this choice, and I think that most fans are too, but the way that Joel so far has been left in the background feels weird, because at the end of the day, both of these characters are at the core of this franchise, and it's what everyone wants to see. But while Joel barely got any screen time, all the new characters did, like Ellie's new girlfriend, Dina, and that other mysterious character, who could be her mom or sister. In pure Naughty Dog fashion, it's a not a character that was deliberately designed to be incredibly buff, and at this point, that's nothing new. Last but not least, while- Wait, what? Hold on. Mysterious character, who could be her mom or sister. In pure Naughty Dog fashion, it's a not a character that was deliberately designed to be incredibly buff, and at this point, that's nothing new. I mean, is it an implied that she's like some kind of fucking forest warrior or some? Uh, that's okay. Last but not least, while Uncharted may have ended for Naughty Dog, the company made sure that Drake had a daughter instead of a son, contrary to what the original plan was. If a Naughty Studio were to eventually continue the franchise, that's the one direction they'd automatically be steered into. Now, that's as far as the choices in that games goes, but the following examples reveal even more to me about Naughty Dog's priorities nowadays. You'll probably remember that pretty bad panel at PSX 2017, with a host that seemed incapable of asking the right questions, who didn't even know the most basic things about the gaming industry. PUBG? I don't know what that is. I played The Last of Us a year ago, and it was the first game I ever played. These were some of the mind blowing statements that had me sitting there feeling embarrassed in my own livestream. I just couldn't understand why last year, a guy who worked at Game Informer did such a good job of leading the panel for a large game like The Last of Us, but now we got this. Well, I did some research, and it turns out that the host is a popular lesbian vlogger, and really, that's the only reason she got to sit here asking questions. Never mind actually being a knowledgeable person who plays games and knows this industry, that's apparently unimportant nowadays. Do you think these guys just have ugly thoughts bubbling under the surface and are frustrated that they can't express them openly, so they resort to these mental gymnastics? In general, no, I don't think so. I think that most of these people mean well. And I think that genuinely, I think that most of the people, like, at least this guy, based on what, I could be totally wrong, but, like, in listening to this guy, I'm pretty sure this guy means well. I'm pretty sure he doesn't hate women. I'm pretty sure that he wants, you know, female representation. I think that people are just unaware of how some of the attitudes they have sometimes are, like, kind of damaging or harmful, I guess. 
That same thing counts for one of the only male characters we've seen introduced, Lev. He's played by a transgender teenager who confirmed during this panel that he was handpicked by Neil to audition. That's the opposite of how all the other actors got their role, at least the ones I heard of, and trust me, I've watched lots of behind-the-scenes content for both Uncharted and The Last of Us. He appeared shy and likable on camera to me and was praised by the devs, but then I took a look at the stuff he constantly tweets about and I don't even need to know anything more. Here's the thing, every single one of these points I have no issue with on its own. Had they been self-contained choices, I wouldn't have thought about it for a second. But add all of it up together, and I'm sorry, but I also believe there is an agenda at play here, and I think it's obvious. Look, The Last of Us Part 2 is gonna be an amazing game. I've absolutely no doubt about it. E3 2018 was meant to be all about the gameplay reveal for the game, and it largely was, but what was the one long cutscene that Noyla felt like it needed to show off before things would go down? A random flashback of Ellie kissing another girl. A plot point that may become essential to the story of the game, but had absolutely no reason to be shown off here at E3. There was no context provided, nothing that led up to it, nor did it have anything to do at all with the gameplay itself. But speak up about finding it an unnecessary addition here, and you're a homophobe. Speak up that you'd rather have Joel remain as the playable character, and the game wasn't made for you in the first place. I came across a tweet from Boone Cotter, one of Noyla's own employees, and I found it so typical for this whole situation. He tweeted the following If you're so socially and culturally inept that the option to play a video game as a female gets you all worked up in a froggy nerd rage, my name is Boone. I make games, but not for people like you. Your kind is done, mate. Do everyone a favor and fuck off. You're embarrassing. The most cringeworthy aspect of all this shit is the ridiculous narrative that game developers are held ransom by the oppressive chokehold of the SJW agenda. Truth, we actually want to make good games, inclusive games, games that disregard your toxic game of bro bullshit. It's exactly this antagonizing, hostile tone that marks the issue I pointed out in the intro of this video. Either you're with them or you're against them. There is no middle way to these people. Noyo is slowly losing longtime fans with this approach, fans who would previously go the extra mile to defend them. I can know because I am one of them, and I've already seen many of my own viewers, massive fans of this company as well, say the same thing. I just hate seeing straw man arguments made up to attack regular gamers, saying we don't like playing as females, that was sexist, homophobes, or toxic gamer bros. Meanwhile, I mean, you've kind of, you've, but you've already made that argument. You just said that you're worried that there's an overemphasis on female characters, so it's pretty obvious that you're not comfortable with it. So why are you acting like that's a straw man argument? <laughs> but. All of us grew up with characters like Lara Croft. We play games with female protagonists all the time, and none of us mind the left behind storyline. Of course, there is that small amount of actual idiots, but it's such a small fraction, and most of the people complaining are doing so with legitimate arguments that are simply ignored and they're all put into the same camp. There's no need to always assume the worst out of people, that if they have an issue, it means that they have the wrong intentions. The majority of gamers like The Last of Us for its story about survival, the bond between Joel and Ellie, and the vicious gameplay in its brutal world. The more you shift focus to other elements, the less people are going to be happy about it. It's not that complicated. The majority of gamers are men. The majority of gamers are straight. They won't mind a character in a gay relationship, but they won't get excited for it or ask for it either. That's not in any way disrespectful to those who do, and it sure doesn't make them homophobes. The gameplay shown at E3 looked awesome, but what is the one thing that the media and Noidog makes the focal point of conversation? Exactly, it's the kiss. Yes, many of their previous games had characters in relationships, but never did that get the focus at E3. I'm just so tired of it all. I used to be such a fan that I'd follow these developers on social media because of their passion for making games, the insight that I'd get that I otherwise wouldn't have known about. Nowadays, that's far from the focus. It's all about political talk and social issues. That's a choice and they're free to make it, but the consequence is that I am becoming less interested in their work as time keeps passing, and I find that a shame. I think about the Noidog that I loved 10 years ago, how at no point I ever felt the need to question the thought process behind a certain character. You know, the funny thing is, now that I did for the very first time, I actually realized how diverse the cast of the Uncharted games was all along, without ever feeling interrupting or taking me out of the experience. I'm all for freedom and equality, but I cannot stand the social justice movements that we see today. Contrary to what they claim to be, they are incredibly intolerant and forceful in their views. That being said, of course the opposite side also exists, and I despise the people that make fun of gay characters and disrespect people who aren't alike just as much. But what some developers and the vocal gaming community out there fail to realize is that the overwhelming majority are rational, intelligent gamers. They can disagree in how they feel about these decisions, but they- Rational, intelligent gamer. You lost me there, buddy. Debate this guy? It would be like another conversation with Boogie. The problem is that like people like this genuinely don't hate women and they're not homophobic and they mean well, so they're impossible to talk to. It's actually easier. I would rather have a conversation with somebody that hates women um, because I can appeal to them on other levels, like maybe make them not hate women and then I can get them on my point of view. But for somebody like this that probably doesn't hate women and doesn't hate minorities or whatever, it's really, really hard to bring them over because anytime you point out that like, hey, you say that you don't hate Men, you don't hate women, you don't hate gay people, but like a lot of the stuff you say, like leaves people feeling really bad. They're like, well, no, 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 it doesn't matter. But I don't actually hate them. But I don't actually blah blah blah. I don't actually blah blah. blah. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, like, okay, it's kind of kind of like the conversation with Boogie, right? It's this creeping realization of the loss of social capital on the basis of being white and male. Yeah, pretty much. He doesn't hate women, but he needs to make content that steers towards his audience. That does. I think the guy's beliefs are pretty genuine. I don't think he's doing it just for money in this video. But maybe he is. I don't know enough about him, but that's not how it came off to me.